welcome back to the Be A Remarkable Student series. This is volume three. So if you haven't seen the previous two, we've already looked at what are the most scientifically effective ways to study. We've already looked at how do you get yourself to study when you have zero motivation. And today we're gonna talk about how do you wake up early? How do you wake up at the time that you set without hitting the snooze button again and again? And how and why is it going to change your life? Why should you even bother? On a scale from 1 to 10, and I want you to write down your answer in the comments right now. Are you a 10? Are you a 10 out of 10 for doing this? And if you are anything but a 10, why not? Don't just listen, take action. So the first thing that I want to say here is go to bed at a set time early so that you have a better chance of waking up early in the morning. That 4 a.m. wake up, 5 a.m. wake up, it doesn't just start at 4 a.m. and it doesn't just depend on what kind of alarm clock you're using, what bed you're sleeping in. The most important thing is, did you get your eight hours of sleep? Are you going to bed at the same time every single day? So you wanna train yourself, just like you would train a puppy, to go to bed at the same time every single day so that your circadian rhythm, the rhythm that you are naturally in based on your environment, your psychology, you're going to bed at the same time. So your body knows it's eight o'clock, the sun has gone down and it's time for me to go to bed. Train yourself, create a habit so that you go to sleep every single day at the same time. Now, how can you do this and why should you do this? Well, I've already said it's important for you to go to bed and get six to eight hours of sleep. Most of us need this. It's not a nice to have, it is a necessity. And the reason for this is there are studies out there that show even just half an hour or an hour every single day of not getting enough sleep, it has a cumulative effect. And so that compounding effect of all that sleep debt that you've accrued, you're going to have to pay it off at some point. And those of us who are living and working and walking around with not enough sleep, it has the same effect as being intoxicated. So would you ever do your revision or your studying after taking a couple of shots of alcohol? No, you wouldn't because it's not going to help you focus. And the most underrated sleep hack, the most underrated productivity hack of them all is go to bed on time, get your eight hours of sleep. And what you want to do is use what you've learned about building good habits, that each habit you build has a trigger, a routine and reward. So maybe your trigger is, I'm going to drink a cold glass of milk and then I'm going to turn off all of my electronic devices. I'm going to say good night to the people that I love, put my phone in another room. I'm going to close the curtains, take a deep breath in and close my eyes. Because if I can't stick to this for myself, well, how much do I really care about these goals? How much do I really care about these dreams? How much do I really care about actualizing that best version of me, giving myself the best chance possible to study, to be remarkable? Don't just listen, take action. And this leads me to the second proven way some of you have heard of the great speaker and role model and inspiration that is David Goggins. And he talks about developing a calloused mind. The reason he wakes up at 4 a.m. is he's training his body just like when he's training in the gym and on his hands he develops calluses from all the pull-ups that he's done where he's hit the world record. In the same way, I want my mind to know, you may have a tactical advantage over me. You may know me inside out. You may try and conquer my weaknesses, but guess what? I'm gonna callous myself to that. I'm going to develop such a powerful routine 
that I am going to stick to every single day because there are so many flaws and things I need to change about myself that I'm going to be immune to your tactics, immune to my weaknesses. So develop a calloused mind. Imagine that you are hardening yourself. At 4 a.m. you wake up, it's dark outside. There is nobody else on your street awake. It's cold, it's damp, it's boring, it's not fun. But you know what? I'm the first one up. But you know what? While you were sleeping, I was doing work. And I didn't feel like it, but already by the time 8 a.m. rolls in, you're gonna look around and realize I've done so much already. My day has been won. And if you start strong, you have a much better chance of finishing strong. Don't leave these things to the last minute. Try and be up when the sun is up. Try and be asleep when the sun is down, if that works for where you are in the world. But whatever you do, build your routine in a way, and this is a really useful tactic to developing that callous mind. And the third thing, this is something that I've learned in my experience as a life coach, is mentally check in with yourself. When anyone I'm speaking with in a one-to-one coaching session says, I'm gonna do this, my first question is always the same thing on a scale from one to 10. And I want you to write down your answer in the comments right now. Are you a 10? Are you a 10 out of 10 for doing this? And if you are anything but a 10, why not? If you're a nine, what would get you to a 10? If you're an eight, what would get you to a 10? I ask this question because if you don't have certainty, certainty in your mind, I am definitely gonna wake up at four o'clock tomorrow. What do you think is gonna happen at 3.55 a.m. or 4.55 a.m. whenever you're waking up and that alarm clock goes off and you're cozy, you're wrapped up in your covers and you want comfort. Your brain wants comfort. You don't care about being remarkable. You don't care about waking up early. Let me just have 10 more minutes. It's going to happen. You are going to be tempted to sabotage not only your goals, but yourself. And so ask yourself before you go to bed, close your eyes and just tap yourself on the head and say, listen, let me have an honest conversation with myself. Am I doing this? Am I a 10? If I'm not a 10, what's going to get me to a 10? Why is this important? Why do I want to wake up at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m.? What is the plan? I'm going to wake up and do what? The clearer you are, the less thinking you have to do when you wake up. And complexity is your enemy of implementation. Tip number four. Use tools and tactics to your advantage. You can go on your phone right now. Most of you have smartphones or you know someone that does. And you can download an app where you have to scan a barcode before it turns off. You can sleep with the curtains open so you have no choice but to wake up when the sun hits your eyes. You can't get back to sleep. Use these things. Design your environment in a way that nudges you to take the right course of action. Design it for yourself rather than being a dead fish that goes with the flow. So look around at your environment and think about what can I do to trigger me towards action, to trigger me towards that best version of me, the remarkable student inside. If you're trying to be like everyone else, keep doing what everyone else does. But if you want what no one else has, you're going to have to do some things that no one else is willing to do. And the final, I left the best tip till last, is learn your sleep chronotype. Waking up at 4 a.m. won't change your life if your body isn't designed for that. Your lifestyle is not designed for that. If it means you're only getting four hours of sleep, what is the point? And there is a test that you can Google called the Sleep Chronotype by Dr. Michael Bruce. 
you have something known as the PER3 gene and what this gene does in your DNA is coded into you that you have a natural rhythm to your day you know this already learn to manage your energy not your time so create a graph on one axis you've got the time of day and the other axis you've got your energy and map out what is my energy like throughout the day at 10 a.m. I have a lot of energy I'm really creative but at 1 p.m. I'm finished but then at 6 p.m. I feel really energized I'm so creative I have a hundred ideas and then at 11 p.m. my mind is wired to get work done but I need to get to sleep now so learn your sleep chronotype and realize that everyone's routine is different. Everyone's sleep routine is different. Everyone's journey is different. Everyone's success is different. You are different. You weren't born to fit in. You were born to stand out. And the key to belonging to any group, any tribe is knowing yourself and creating an environment and a structure around you that is going to change your life. And for the bonus sixth tip is journaling. Writing down your thoughts and clarifying what is essential and what is not. And what I mean here is not just arbitrarily, randomly writing down whatever comes to mind, but in a structured way. Now here's the good news. You don't have to figure out what those things are. There are thousands of people over thousands of years of human history who have found the way to focus your mind using journaling and today's video is actually sponsored by habit nest morning sidekick journal this is a journal that has been scientifically designed to give you new things every day that you can focus on and work towards and the best thing is this it takes three minutes minimum to complete it in just three minutes you can set up your entire day your entire week and I would say that 30 minutes is optimum and to make it even better they offer a 50 year yes 50 year full refund and guarantee if you don't love it so check out the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video of this being a remarkable student series so if you enjoyed this speech this series make sure you comment down below make sure you subscribe to my youtube channel to motivation to study and i will see you next time where we are going to talk about the five ways that social media is ruining your life peace